Vital Empty Beers, welcome to our $2,000 full suspension mountain bike comparison test. At Vital, we have the privilege of spending time aboard some really nice and expensive mountain bikes. We've ridden the Uno Ever downhill bike, which is almost $12,000. And we've tested wheel sets that cost as much or more as the bikes featured here today. We felt it was time to come back down to earth, do it for the people, and see how capable an entry-level $2,000 mountain bike really is. We found six 29ers in the 120 to 140 millimeter rear travel range. They're considered trail bikes, if you're unaware of how mountain bikes are classified these days. A trail bike is made to do a little bit of everything and hopefully do it pretty well. It has more travel than a cross-country bike and less travel than what's called an enduro bike. The two least expensive bikes in our test are the Giant Stance 29-1 and the Norco Fluid FS3, which both retail for only $1,800. The Marin Rift Zone 2 comes in at $1,949, while the GT Sensor Sport, the Fazari Abajo Peak, and the Vitus Mathique 29 VRX are two grand apiece. We'll note right away that the Fazari is $2,000 without a dropper seat post. We tested the bike with a dropper, which is an upcharge that we'll cover when we discuss the bike. All the prices here are retail at the time of testing. There may be sales or deals that impact the price over time. At this budget price point, we were really curious to see what features we would and wouldn't get compared to bikes that cost two, three, or even four times as much. Every bike we tested was a size medium, and coincidentally, not by our choice, they all featured SRAM 12-speed 1x Eagle drivetrains. That means there's a single chainring up front at the crank, 12 speeds out back, no front derailleur, keeping the bike simple, efficient, and quiet. There were spec similarities between the bikes, like three of them running RockShox Recon Forks, but each bike was definitely its own machine, each with unique riding characteristics. The Vitus and the Fazari can only be purchased online and shipping charges may apply. The GT, Norco, and Giant must be purchased through a bike shop that sells one of those brands. Those bikes can be ordered through their brand websites, but the bike must be picked up at an authorized dealer. Marin has authorized shops that it works with, but Marins can also be purchased directly through the online shop, JensenUSA.com. There are a lot of things to learn if you're a first-time bike buyer, but we're here to help. These aren't the only bikes out there at this price, but they're a great sampling of what's available. If you have the means to bump up into the $2,500 range, your options open up even more. For those willing to do some research and take the leap, a pre-owned mountain bike can be a great way into the sport with some incredible deals to be found in the used bike market. If you buy used, as with anything in that market, buyer beware. We're budget bike models. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, budget bikes, budget models. <laughs> Steve Wentz, Brad Howell, and I rallied these budget-friendly bikes near Boise, Idaho, putting them into situations we thought were fair for anyone serious about riding a mountain bike. Our test reveals bike performance highlights, pros and cons of each bike, what kind of rider and terrain the bike is suited for, and what we might upgrade if we had an extra $200 to spend. If you want to jump around to a specific bike or topic, there are timeline links in the description below. Let's kick it off with the GT Sensor Sport. GT is a legacy brand with a massive history in BMX and mountain biking. Their $2,000 Sensor Sport is the most affordable bike in their trail lineup. The geometry on the sensor is up there with the most modern of the group. Our medium has a 450 millimeter reach, 66 degree head angle is paired with a 42 millimeter offset RockShox Recon Fork. The pedaling efficiency of the 130 millimeter rear travel GT was a highlight of all the bikes in the test. Despite its hefty 34 pound weight, the bike accelerated well uphill and the rear end stayed planted and composed with a laterally stiff design and high volume X Fusion trunnion mounted shock. The front end of the bike, however, was out of balance with the well performing rear end. The front tire just wasn't enough for pushing hard in the corners or tackling rough terrain, and the 140mm Travel RockShox Recon, which is also on our Giant and Marin test bikes, was a below average performer on the GT. The Tektro M285 brakes were not up to the task when hard stopping at speed was required, even with the supplied 180mm rotors front and rear. Two fingers. <laughs> to bring back some positivity, the sensor does have a geometry adjusting flip chip. We stayed in the low setting through the test, but the option is nice for those who want to tinker. Obviously, our $200 upgrade on the GT would be a dropper seat post. 
At $2,000, the Sensor Sport has a standard post, and what we found was that that post was too short for one of our testers as he hit the minimum insertion line. Catch up with us on the climb, bro. <laughs> okay, get on it. <laughs> Adding a dropper will mean more aggressive riding, which will push the front end even more. Considering the seat post upgrade, a front tire upgrade that we'd like to do, adding a 200 millimeter rotor up front for some braking power, you're more than halfway to GT's sensor comp at 2750, which has a better fork, better brakes, better tires, and a dropper post. If you're a diehard GT fan, we'd recommend saving up until you can get the sensor comp, or take some time with upgrades, knowing the frame geometry and rear suspension performance is solid on the sensor sport. Is that like good mellow speed? <laughs> <laughs> Fazari is an established direct-to-consumer bike brand based in Utah. They've been shipping bikes directly through their website for years, and despite their history, they can get lost in the shuffle against the likes of YT, Canyon, or Comensal. Having had a good experience aboard their LaSalle Peak a year ago, we were excited to see what their wallet-friendly Abajo Peak had to offer. Fazari comes out swinging for only $2,000. The Abajo Peak features a SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain, it's the only one in our test compared to all the other bikes with the lower level SX Eagle drivetrain. There's a 2.5 inch Maxxis Minion DHF wide trail front tire, 2.4 Minion DHR rear tire, both with XO casing. There's SRAM level brakes, a 35 millimeter diameter cockpit, and a SRAM dub bottom bracket with external bearings, the only bike to have this in our test. The Abajo Peak gets 130 millimeters of travel out back and 140 up front, both using X Fusion suspension. During setup, Steve immediately noticed that the Abajo Peak had the most tunable rear suspension. The clicks of rebound were more usable throughout the range than on any other bike in our test. Really slow. Two clicks slower. Pretty much unusable, and that's the end of your adjustment. So, so there's only three clicks on that one, but they're that drastic. I was four out, but the other two at the far into the spectrum aren't really usable. So I think that X Fusion has a pretty cool range um, of what's usable, you know, within uh, like the 170 pound rider weight. The well-tuned and spec suspension led to some of the best performance on medium and big hits on the trail. A rider living in an area with chunky or ledged fill terrain would be really happy on the Abajo Peak. Pedaling was relatively neutral and we did notice some minor pedal bob but it wasn't anything that scared us away. The Fazari is a mail order bike, which means you order it online, and shows up at your door in a box. Assembly was straightforward and should be within reach of any rider ready for a full suspension bike. Fazari offers a 30 day love it or return it guarantee, a 23 point bike fit and setup guide, as well as live chat, phone, or email contact after you purchase the bike to provide some peace of mind since you won't be dealing directly with a bike shop. Like mentioned earlier, the $2,000 price tag on the Abajo Peak does not include a dropper post. For a $200 upcharge, you get the Abajo Peak as we tested it, including the X-Fusion dropper. At $2,200 with the dropper, we would highly recommend the Abajo Peak as a bike that has components ready to perform and last under harder riding conditions. If you're a rider that can work on your own bike and knows when to take care of the little things, the Fazari is a great bang for the buck. We have an entry level bike. Can they survive? Is the equipment up to snuff for some real mountain bike riding? Let's discuss the most surprising bike in our test, the Giant Stance 29-1. We almost didn't even include the Giant because the head angle is a steep 67.5 degrees. The $1,800 price tag and diversity of the brand made us willing to take a chance. The RockShox Recon and Monarch Shock, along with the SX Eagle drivetrain, are par for the course at this price point. Shimano MT-201 brakes adorn the stance, as well as the Marin in our test, and a giant contact dropper post brings the bike into the modern world. The Maxxis Forecaster tires with XO casing have proven themselves already in the Boise area and complemented our testing grounds with fast rolling speeds and predictable cornering, to a point. Setup was rather simple due to the limited suspension adjustment. On the flip side, that simple process means dialing in a bike for maximum performance can be, well, limiting, as we showed with shock rebound adjustment ranges. Betting in the Giant's brakes took some effort, 
and despite not being as weak as the Tektros in our test, they still felt underpowered. On the trail, the stance feels like the definition of a mountain bike. The stance was surprisingly well-balanced, easy to pump, jump, and maneuver. The RockShox Recon on the Giant performed better than the Recon on our GT for no obvious reason. Pedaling the stance was a pleasure, nice and neutral. The stance being the lightest bike in our test at 31 pounds 2 ounces without pedals definitely helped it feel speedy. The Giant was so much fun and so easy to ride that we wanted a beefier front tire to squeak more out of the corners. Larger rocks and bigger hits did have the stance feeling taxed. Pushed hard enough, it worked our nerves in those rougher rock gardens. Because the stance can carry so much speed, stronger brakes are required. Big mountain riders probably won't even have this bike on their radar, but the aspiring Nike athlete would have a ball racing and ripping this trail rated 29er. In the end, to our surprise, the stance was the one bike in the test that had us all saying, yeah, I'd own that bike and I'd love it. Pretty fun bike. Despite the not for everyone press fit bottom bracket or the outdated non-boost rear axle, we had a blast on the stance and recommend it for any all around trail rider based on its value and performance. Buying the Giant, you get the security and peace of mind of working with a local dealer if you need help with any bike setup or maintenance. Our $200 upgrade would mean larger rotors to keep this rocket in check, as well as investigating a more stout front tire. This is Vital MTV. I swear we're not elitist all the time, riding $3,000 wheel sets and $2,000 front suspension. Vitus is a consumer direct brand distributed by Chain Reaction Cycles out of Belfast, Ireland. Vitus bikes are available through Chain Reaction Cycles and Wiggle online stores. The Mathique is a new line from the brand and is offered in both 27.5 and 29 inch wheeled versions. Our Mathique 29 VRX is the most expensive offering in their lineup at a mere $1,999. The Mathique was our big dog in the test with 140 millimeters of travel front and rear. The Marzocchi Bomber Z2 was a visual treat, adding some pop at the front of a clean gray frame. A SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain blends in with the rest of our test, but Shimano MT501 brakes with servo wave lever are a welcome sight over the other Tektro and lower level Shimano brakes in our test. A Brand X 125mm dropper on our size medium and Schwalbe, Magic Mary, and Hans Dampf tires round out the capable highlights of this $2,000 build. For the price, the spec is fantastic. We know this is a budget bike for a wide range of riders, but given the capable nature of this build, a few more clicks of usable rebound on the Monarch would have helped suspension tuning. The shorter drop of the seat post and the inability to insert the post as much as we'd like limited the bike's ability on steeper descents. You know what really chaps my ass? Droppers that don't go down all the way. This is maximum insertion. <laughs> as you, are, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm recording, I'm good. Those quibbles aside, the Vitus was the most confidence-inspiring bike for gravity situations in our test. It also went uphill well thanks to the best engaging hub out of the entire group. The solid performance of the Marzocchi Z2, the power of the Shimano brakes, the grippy tires, and the modern aggressive geometry left us feeling like we were riding a top shelf trail bike. It wasn't just the additional travel out back compared to the other bikes, it was the complete package. With a reach just over 444 millimeters and a head angle just over 66 degrees, cornering was kept sharp, but it was still capable in the steeps. Aside from struggling to keep our hips low enough due to the shortest dropper, this bike we felt could handle days at a lift serve bike park. And despite the big build and big travel, the Mathique was only 32 pounds, one ounce, the second lightest bike in our test. If we threw another $200 at the Vitus, it might be for a longer travel or shallower insertion dropper post to unlock its full downhill potential. Another option would be to hold on to that $200 for visits to your local shop. With a mail order bike like this, you'll be on your own for maintenance and upkeep. During our test, the Vitus developed a loose pivot. The same thing happened on our Fazari. This is normal and not out of the ordinary when braking in a new bike. But lesser experienced riders may not pick up on something coming loose right away. Paying a qualified mechanic to go through the bike tip to tail after some miles would be a great investment. Hey Vital MTB, this is Cheap Trail Bike Test Sessions. I'm Brad Howell. And we're walking up in the Golden Kind Light Bro with our GoPros on gimbals and super slow-mo. Is it just us or has Norco been on a tear lately with their bikes? 
We loved the Norco Fluid FS129er last year, and since then we've been loving their new optic and sight. When the Fluid FS3 arrived, we had high expectations for the affordable Canadian Steed. The Fluid is a 120mm travel frame that uses an X-Fusion O2R shock, mated to a 130mm travel SR Suntour XCR 34 air fork. The dependable SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain is present, and TransX supplies the 130mm dropper seat post for the Norco. Tektro HD M275 brakes are in charge of slowing down the Fluid's massive 29 by 2.6 inch Goodyear Escape tires. For just $1,799, the Fluid has some solid parts with a great looking frame. With tires that dwarfed all others in the test, we went softer with tire pressure, but not full on Lunar Rover sagginess. The one component that we could not get under control was the brakes. We're taking the biggest hill we can find, and it seems they can be marginally better at the end. After multiple days of riding, they're still not bedded in, so last chance. From beginning to the bitter end, the Tektro brakes were inept at stopping the Fluid FS3. The same experience we had with the Tektros aboard the GT and its lighter weight 2.2 inch tires was compounded on the Norco with its bigger, heavier tires. The Fluid FS3 is the continuation of the all around trail ride experience with those big tires. They provide cackle worthy cornering control. Our medium bike had a 440 millimeter reach, 66 and a half degree head angle, and 429 mil rear center. It was a balanced ride highlighted by an awesome ability to climb nearly anything. The overall feel of the Norco had us wanting to plow any and every obstacle the trail dared put in our way. This was the antithesis of the pop and play nature of the giant stance. While the massive Goodyears do monster truck the rocks, they can only do so much to mask the rather harsh suspension. Big rotational forces can impact or even overpower suspension component performance. And at this price point, it's always a game of give and take. The Norco could have been a front runner, a monster on the descents, a billy goat on the climbs, had it not been for the Tektro brakes. We put them through every test, gave them every chance, but at best, all they could do was slow the bike down somewhat. Any improvement? Slightly better, but like the rear sucks. It's super spongy. I don't know if that's, I, I believe it's not perfect, but this is how it came. This is how most people would get it. And then the front like gripping hard, it's not even close to stopping well. In a game of would you rather, we wondered if we'd rather have rim brakes instead, which is a bummer because the FS3 carries the spirit of the awesome $2,800 FS1. It has glimmers of greatness offered by a solid chassis, but that sheen is dulled by inefficient suspension and incompetent brakes. We aren't writing this one off completely. For our $200, we could install some larger rotors or even a set of Shimano's MT501 brakes to get this promising rig back on track. If you live in a place with rocks and loose over hard pack conditions, the fluid might be your trail tamer with traction to spare. Is there a game? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Don't wear it out, make sure it's safe. Oh, it won't wear out. <laughs> it won't wear out. <laughs> Last and certainly not least is the Marin Rift Zone 2 coming in at $1,949. This is the newest iteration of the fun and capable Rift Zone line from the Northern California brand. This 2020 version no longer borders on cross country travel and geometry. It has travel bumped up to 125 and 130 mils compared to the older bike at 120 front and rear. Geometry is the most aggressive in our group with a 65 and a half degree head angle and a long 455 millimeter reach on our medium. A 35 millimeter stem means it's ready to party. There's more SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain. There's a RockShox Recon, which we're familiar with, but we have a promising RockShox Deluxe Select shock with debonair sleeve out back. Shimano's MT201 brakes, the same as the Giant, slow the bike down, sorta. With updated travel and geometry, Marin has gone extremely aggressive with their tire choice. The V-Flow snap tires are only 2.3 inches wide, but they feature Flow's tacky rubber compound with large ground chewing knobs. All right, everyone, we got the Marin Rift Zone 2 that showed up the day after we did our testing with the other five bikes. Unfortunately, due to some shipping issues, the Rift Zone showed up the day after Steve and Brad headed home. So I'm the only one that got to ride the bike. Using the same trails that I know well and that were in our test, I gathered some time on the Rift Zone. 
right away the slow rolling nature of the tires is apparent. This is in stark contrast to the fast rolling tires of the previous rift zone. Even though the bike is 32 and a half pounds, it's extremely sluggish uphill due to the nearly downhill ready tires. Thankfully, and I'll speak for Steve and Brad on this one, none of us in this test really care about suffering to the top if we have a capable bike for the way down. The tires are sick and that stuff. The new geometry, the bump in travel, the RockShox Deluxe, all combined with those meaty tires, make the Rift Zone punch above its weight class when things get rough and when things get fast. The damped nature of the tire construction and the RockShox Deluxe keep the bike composed through the chatter and on bigger hits. The tire profile is pretty squared off, however, and in hard packed flat corners, leaning into those bulky side knobs can get squirrely. In sandy or loaming conditions, they'll hold, but they're definitely not an all conditions tire. The RockShox Recon on the Marin was the best performing of the three we tested. It was smoother and more consistent than that of the GT or the Giant. We'll chalk up the performance variances to production issues at this low end of the spectrum. If you get a bike with a Recon, have your local mechanic give it a once over. When the fork works properly, it works well. As you may have guessed, the downfall of the Marin is the brakes. A bike that can handle so much at speed and the rough and needs to be able to stop at will. The Shimano MT-201s weren't the worst, but they were definitely no match for the MT-501s of the Vitus or the SRAM level brakes of the Fazari. We definitely put our $200 towards better brakes on the Marin, knowing the kind of fun that awaits this bike on the descents. If we found an extra 50 bucks, we'd also take off the rear V-Flow snap tire, save it for use once the other front one wears out, and replace the back tire with something faster. Marin has cracked the modern trail code with their newest rift zone. Upgrade the brakes, get ready to earn your way up, and prepare for some class leading descending on the way down. You can purchase the bike directly from Jensen USA or from a Marin authorized bike shop in your area. It's been a blast finding out what a budget mountain bike can do. We're surprised by the level of performance available for $2,000 or less, and we hope you found the test informative. Hit us up with your comments, your questions, and let us know what bikes we should round up for our next shootout.